Because it's Milrad Winterfair today, um, some of you may have heard this before, but I thought it would be nice. I usually end with this one, but I'm going to begin with this one. This is a tribute to Susie Oakes, uh, who, uh, and today I found out, obviously, that Tansy Tucker was also very much uh, one of those first uh, initiators and uh, idealists around the Mill Road Winter Fair. And then it was Susie Oakes that got the road closed. And so this I wrote. It's two voices. I might do a bit of a Tommy Cooper here and stand there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. So, tea, coffee. Do have some cake. It's truly delicious. Go on, treat yourself. Life's too short. Mill Road. It's a long road with a bridge in the middle. One side of the bridge is a place we all know as Romsey Town. And the opposite side is Petersfield. When can we meet again? Let's put a date in the diary now, and then we'll know it's going to happen. Mine, yours, CB1. Shops and cafes line this prestigious location, this urban hotspot, this ethically diverse mix of community, and of course, spirit. Come along, the more the merrier. And you would not want to be involved, would you now? The Salvation Army shop used to be a cinema, and Subway was Barney's, selling cut price clothing. Ditchburn was a workhouse, and the cemetery, well, that used to have its own chapel. So, let's recap. Who's in charge of what? Food stalls? Check. Buskers? Check. Opening ceremony? Check. Health and safety. Check. The terraced houses that are off Mill Road used to house the many railway workers that came to Cambridge back in the time. Great meeting with only one week to go. Six bells for a drink now. I've lived down Mill Road area all of my life. I knew Mill Road before the Mill Road Winter Fair existed. I do not remember the exact date, but I do remember being brought back home by this voice, this persuasive voice, calling all of the community, yes, each and every one of you, young and old, community, diversity and respect is the name of the game. When? The first Saturday in December. Yes, you heard correctly. December. This is a winter fair, not a summer one. <coughs> Susie Oakes, a lady I once met down Mill Road with persuasive skills that were so strong you wouldn't even realise you were being press scanned into something Mill Road minded until she'd left you. Known as the power of persuasion, remembered as the community champion, Susie Oakes, we're all here today. Mill Road women, men, children, all playing our part in this meeting we all call life to community spirit and beyond. So, thank you. Today it's 10 years, uh, but kind of 11 apparently, because the first one was kind of unofficial and it's 10 years since the Mill Road Winter Fair has been going, so thanks to Susie Oaks. So now um, we're going to start with four new monologues that were inspired by the history um, research that's been going on. And this, oh, can you introduce yeah. it yourself? Which so it's the Harris okay. Norman. And um, thanks to Tansy Tucker, um, who Ooh. opens the antique shop down the road over the bridge. Um, this uh, monologue is about number 206 Mill Road. And she's loaned us this hat for this one of all. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it here. Okay. So this is a um, about a character called Harris Norman, told from the point of view of Mr. William Wall. Uh, Mr. William Wall was a hairdresser, and Harris Norman. Will you find out uh, what Harris Norman was? <clears throat> ah. Good afternoon. That's a nice necklace you're wearing. Come here, my dear. Let me have a closer look. Yes. Oh, I thought it was gold. 
<laughs> Hallmark? Oh, no matter. No one really looks these days. If they do, you ask any questions, you quickly get them to try the item of jewelry on. Oh, yes, suits you, madam. Oh, yes, sir, you look like a treat. Yes. How much? Ah, oh, how much, you may inquire. Enough, but not too much to you, my dears. <laughs> not too much. Not too much was his line. Oh, yes, not too much is what all of the customers fell for every time. A sale, a purchase, a bargain. Ladies would get out their silk purses and gentlemen would pull out their leather wallets from their inside pockets, handing over their weekly earnings to Mr. Harris Norman. Jeweler and investment dealer at your service, my dears. <laughs> he called everyone, my dear, apart from his so-called family. <laughs> By all accounts, he wasn't impressed with them, and to tell you the truth, they weren't that impressed with him. Lend us a farthing or a guinea or two. You've got plenty of money, you old miser. Misery and old Polish Jew is what they called him too. Families, you either love them or you loathe them. And believe me, old Harris certainly loathed his lot. He had no intention of giving them any of his, let's say, slyly negotiated earnings. No handouts for this unfortunate family, not while Harris Norman was living or dead. Oh no, he stored up guineas in that little upstairs room in number 206. Me? I lived across the road at number 171 Mill Road, Mr. William Wolf hairdresser by trade and friend to old Mr. Harris Norman. Well, he might have been me, but he certainly knew how to earn a bob or two. And he always had a good chat with me when we saw each other, which was every day. In fact, it was me that told him to make a will. At first, he said it was too much bother, and he had nobody to leave his money to. But as we stood on Mill Road chatting one day, one day, he told me that he had once been a patient at Addenbrooke's Hospital, where he'd apparently received very kind treatment. Of course, on hearing this, I immediately suggested that he should leave some money to the hospital, and to my surprise, he did. He agreed. He decided that he would leave half of his money to the hospital and half to the London Jewish Synagogue for the benefit of poor and needy Jews. You see, he was a Jew. <laughs> Born in Poland. Polish. Foreign. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure whether he would write or whether... It was just poor eyesight, but on the day that I completed his will, I asked him to come across the road to mine to check and sign it, and he launched into one of his speeches. William, my dear, I can't see a thing. You know, all this looking at diamonds and pearls is stinted my sight. You'll have to sign it on my behalf, my friend. Well, a marked cross and the deed was done. Signed, sealed, and witnessed by our other friend, Mr. Hurrell, who lived a few doors down at number 236 Mill Road. In Mill Road, that's where we all lived and worked, all us traders together, helping each other out whenever we could, wills and all, till death us do part. <laughs> Thank the Lord Almighty, we sorted out old Mr. Harris Norman's will, because death came a-knocking at the door. Number 206, Harris Norman. Deceased. Oh, how the magpies fly when the north wind doth blow. His family, all dressed in black and waiting for their share, their inheritance, waiting, waiting for their pockets to be lined with fake silver and gold and a fair few guineas and farthings. Over my dead body, my dears! Never, never, never will they get their hands on my treasures. Family. Ha! Can you keep this under your hat? Can you? You see, if I'd have known it was under this old beauty, I could have told the solicitor all the time, but I, I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. 
far as I knew, Mr. Harris Norman's will was locked away in Mr. Hurrell's safe. Only it turns out that inside the sealed envelope that was given to Mr. Hurrell by Mr. Norman was a set of instructions for writing a will. Where's the will? Where's Mr. Harris Norman's last will and testimony? Inside this? <laughs> Can you believe me when I tell you that I found old Mr. Harris Norman's original will in the sink lining of this old hat that he lent me ages ago to wear at my friend's funeral? I tried to give it back to him, but the funny thing is, he said that I could keep it. He never gave you anything, not even a cup of tea. Mr. Miser, the jeweller. Mr. Miser, the Jew. He made up the excuses that his landlady, Mrs. Colcott of 206, complained that it, this hat that I hold here in my hand, was in the way. <laughs> this is the last will and testament of me, Harris Norman, bachelor, resident of 206 Mill Road, Cambridge, in the county of Cambridge. I give and bequeath the whole of my property whatsoever and wheresoever to be equally divided between the two establishments named herein. To Addenbrooke's Hospital, Cambridge, and the London Synagogue for the Poor and Needy Jews, and I name the Governor of the Hospital sole executor. I often wonder, did he know that I keep the hat and find the wood? Hats off to Harris Norman. <laughs> may he rest in peace, my dears. Rest in peace. <laughs> Brilliant. It's so much nicer hearing them than actually performing them. Normally, my students do this, and I much prefer that. But it's been wonderful. Thank you. So now I'm going to be brave. Katie, yes. Just interrupt you yes. Because Katie knows how much was in that room. Ah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We're a lot of money. When was it? Uh, 1927, I want to say. Oh, yeah. 24,000 and 12 went to Right, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Perhaps I'll put the figure in there. I'll feed that in, because that's great. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Thank you. That's great. It's great to hear these voices. This one, I'm going to be a bit brave. Uh, I'd much prefer an actor to do this one as well, but here we go. This one is another new one, and it's Dolly Moy, and she was uh, a lady that worked at the bathhouses um, in Gwynn Street uh, when there were saunas there. Um, 1973, she was featured in um, the Cambridge Daily News, um, and that's where I got the research from this, and again, one of the reports. Um, so, I've been a little bit creative with this, and it, it requires my singing voice. So, um, hello, Dolly, well, hello, Dolly. Come on in and get yourself warm. Sauna is steaming today, and so is my kettle. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. Cup of tea, biscuit, you're looking swell, Dolly, I can tell, Dolly, take as long as you want, love. I'm here all day, ten and a half hour shift, and I'm not complaining, you're still glowing, you're still crowing, you're still going strong darts and disco dancing that's what keeps me young my love <laughs> i feel the room swaying while the band's playing Engelbert, Humble Dick and Jim Reeves, you can't beat them. Please release me, let me go, for I don't love you anymore. One of your old favourite songs from way back when. Pass me your cup.
cup and then source of love. Trust me, I'm a dab hand at looking into your future. <laughs> so, take a wrap, fellas. Find her an empty lap, fellas. Oh, he looks tall, dark <laughs> and handsome to me. Dolly will never go away, my husband. Dolly will never go away. Oh, I've trained him well. My <laughs> dinner's on the table every Saturday night. Dolly will never go away. More tea, love. Dolly will never go away again. Dolly Moy, queen of the sauna, female attendant at the bath back in 1973, when there was more hot water, there was more than hot water on offer. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>